Hello? Yep. Hello? Yep. That was weird. <laughs> yeah, it was. Okay. All right. So we're still we're still on well, right on cue where there was a little lag there, huh? That scared me a little bit. All right. So thanks everybody for joining us. Nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Uh we have uh the honorable and uh, uh handsome Raj. <laughs> Raj from uh, Amroot. You're the North American distributor of Amroot whiskey here, right? Is that the uh, uh, official US. title here? U.S. The U.S. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, but the uh, but but I I thought you did do some business up in Canada or something like well, that. Well, not... we used to. We don't anymore. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um. Well, I'm just going to make, make the screen a little big, bigger here. Um, so, yeah, why don't you, why don't you introduce yourself um, and tell us a little bit about your journey? Hi, everyone. Uh, sorry about the uh, technical issues we had on Thursday, um, but yeah. I'm glad everyone could join us today. Um, so, yeah, my name is Raj. As Alex has said, I think I've met most of you. Um, I'm one of the owners of Glass Revolution Imports, and we are, as Alex said, uh, the U.S. importer of Armroot. Um, we are actually, this month, uh, April, we're celebrating 10 years of bringing Armroot into the U.S. So it was oh, yeah. April nice. 2010 that we started. Uh, we actually launched our first uh, release of Armroot back in the U.S., and back then it was only available in uh, New York, New Jersey, and Massachusetts. So okay. um, it is, you know, it was not available in Pennsylvania. It was not available uh, California, Texas, anywhere else. Um, but then we slowly started getting distribution in, uh, in def different states. And now we are in uh, 45, 46 <clears throat> states across the U.S. Nice, nice. Yeah. So were you the first... Uh uh, first, were you the were you the group to bring Amroot to the to U.S. Uh, uh, initially? Yes, we were. Okay. Um, so, so my uh, my business partners. In, I grew up in Canada. Um, yeah. My business partners there um, called me up. I had I had moved to the U.S. in two thousand and eight, late two thousand and eight. Uh -huh. um, and my business partners called me up and said, "Oh, um, I think this was in two thousand and nine." Uh, that they were importing Amrit into uh, Western Canada, so up okay. the, et cetera. And they said, oh, we, uh, Amrit's asking about the U.S. And uh, we, had, my, my partners and I had always talked about going into business together. We have a long <laughs> history of uh, whiskey um, appreciation. Um, and so... Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm not doing anything right now. Uh, 2008, yeah, as, as, as most of you know, 2008. Yeah, 2008 huh? the, yeah. yeah, the fight, the financial, uh, you know, the, the, the last big crisis we had uh, in the economy when the markets took a dive and, and, and uh, all the financial institutions were laying off people. So um, I, not knowing anything about the business side of uh, alcohol distribution in the U.S. decided, what the hell, take a chance. And um, we started hell, going through all the machinations of getting our uh, license and approvals. And back then, uh, the TTB demanded that we send samples of everything that we were going to bring in so they could mm -hmm. lab test it uh, and... <clears throat> what it should be uh, classified as. And um, back then, and actually still today, uh, single malt whiskey is not a recognized designation in the US. So um, at one point they wanted me to label everything straight malt whiskey. Um, yeah. And they said, what the hell, straight malt whiskey? Um, <laughs> so they finally relented and said, well, malt whiskey, and you can, yes, you can use the word single in front of it. Uh, okay. But we we fought them quite a few times and and think uh, you know uh, I think we can owe it that uh, today we do no longer have to submit samples uh, to the TTB for approval. 
mm-hmm. um, we can go ahead and, and just get label approval and, and bring things in. Gotcha. Uh, and Annabelle asks you, asks where in Canada are you from? I grew up in Toronto. Oh, okay. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I have, fa- I have family in, uh, in Burlington towards Tor- Toronto area. Well, it's actually it's more towards Niagara than it is towards Toronto. Oh, it depends <laughs> okay. which way you're going. But <laughs> okay. we used to, growing up, we used to call Burlington Borrington, but uh, oh, really? Okay. It's, it's, but uh, now it's like it's now yeah, it's cool. Sure. Yeah, now, 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 now it's Burlington. like the hip spot, right? Yeah, because uh, so, yeah. so it's interesting because um, so uh, I, I, that was a question I wanted to ask you about the history here with the North American launch because you know uh, just from my research I found the Purple Valley Imports was that your original name because I know you're uh, you're uh, Glass Rev right now right yeah so Purple Valley Imports was the Canadian uh, company name and okay. so when we started the US operation uh, you know we didn't set, we didn't know where things were going to go so yeah. we used the same name okay um, and then about 4 years ago we changed the name to Glass Revolution. Um, basically, the the name the the name came up from the fact that we wanted to emphasize to people that we're revolutionizing what's in your glass. That oh, uh, okay. we're not we're not importing the same old stuff. We're importing some really cool and different things. Um, <laughs> we still have some people who say to me, "Oh, you import glass?" And I'm like, "No, no, no. You have nothing <laughs> to do with glass. It's what's in the glass." Yeah. That's funny. Okay. Um, so how exciting, so, so you're really kind of seeing this, you know, renaissance of, you know, whiskey appreciation, uh, you know, kind of like almost from the beginning, you know, in the last 10 years, like what, you know, what, what a huge boom it's been. Right. Um, oh, absolutely. Tell us, tell us a little bit more about like. Obviously, when you started with Amru, people weren't like banging down the doors to drink Indian <laughs> whiskey, <laughs> you know, in 2008 or 2010, right? Yeah. Uh, and um, we know that Amru Whiskey, I think, uh, launched a single malt in 2005. Is that Four. right? Yeah. Four. 2004, 2005. And they were doing blind test, blind tastings in, in Scotland. And people were like, whoa. It's like they thought this was like a space side malt or maybe like a Highland malt or like a Scotch whiskey. You know, never did anybody expect like um, uh, uh, Indian whiskey to taste just as good, if not better than Scotch whiskey. And 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 tell us about that journey and, and what you've been talking uh, well, to me about over the last 10 years. You know, Yeah, that's a good question because <clears throat> it, it's sort of a circumstance, a uh, faith of circumstance. What happened is in the in the seventies, late seventies, early eighties, um, mm-hmm. a lot of the Scotch companies started coming into India and yeah. um, tapping the market and introducing um, a lot of blended whiskeys. Um, but previously, uh, a lot of the blend, the higher end whiskeys that were sold in India had a higher concentration of malt in them. Uh, less mm-hmm. grain alcohol, um, it, which was only for the premium stuff because the whiskey that's still produced and sold in India is primarily um, a neutral molasses spirit yeah. that then has either some imported uh, whiskey added to it or some uh, a malt that's made locally added to it. Um, Amrut for their higher end whiskey, which is called Mac Q. Okay. Um, they always put a higher percentage of uh, malt in it. Yeah. Um, but when the Scottish distilleries and producers started introducing these um, lighter style whiskeys, which had less malt in it, uh, Amrit was left with all this stock of uh, maturing, really good quality malt spirit. Mm-hmm. And they said, well, what are we going to do with it? Because the had art had started to develop a taste for lighter whiskeys um you know there were obviously if you have more grain alcohol in it it's cheaper to produce so it undercut the prices yeah um so that's when uh neil um you know the the, ch- the former chairman of armored said to rick his son who was doing his mba at council 
why don't you do yeah. your thesis on whether or not we can uh, sell a single malt from India? And yeah. um, you know, that's when they did the research. Okay, so it was like a that's research smart. paper. That's interesting. Well, it was it was his thesis for his MBA. Yeah, and uh, and and they were Which included you know, they were the producing. blind tastings. Right, exactly. That was okay. something. And they went to uh, cool, a, huh? a couple of pubs in Glasgow. Um, you know, had the barkeep pour the single malt um, to people and judge the reactions. And and everyone would say, well, it's a space side, it's a island. And when they were told, no, it's actually a single malt from India, they were like, what the fuck? They can't be that. <laughs> you know, there's no way. Um, it, when when Jack showed them the bottle of what it was, they were like, "Oh, that's that's crazy, man! They can't be making uh, that good quality whiskey in India." Yeah. Um, and you know, and actually, when I was first told um, Aubert, uh single malt, uh, looking into importing it into the U.S., I said, "Oh, there's no there's no good Indian single malt in India." Um, yeah, yeah. Because when I you know when when we went to visit our relatives, uh, you know, most of the stuff we drank was, um, you know, uh, yeah, uh, officer's challenge, uh, officer's choice. Uh, officer's Wilson, choice, maybe. Things like that. Uh, there was a McDowell's single malt um, that was available, yeah. which was okay. But, you know, really the quality wasn't there. And right. when and I tasted Ombrut, I was like, wow, this is really good. Yeah, yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Is that, is that... Well, I, I mean, that, I think uh, so. Uh, Amrit was the first, you know, the first one to obviously export the single malt whiskeys from India. They they uh, opened the door. They tested the market, and obviously, they've been the uh, you know opened it for other producers to now uh, mm -hmm. export single malt out of India. So, uh, I think currently in the U.S., we have uh, three other single malt producers from India that are available. Um, yeah. So I think it's, it's opening up the whole. Uh, we armored, uh, sorry, Indian single malt is probably where Japanese single malt was eight years ago, maybe mm -hmm. 10 years ago. So we're just on a cusp of really getting uh, uh, a right. yeah. greater appreciation for it. Uh, Tipping point. You know, yeah. I, I think, uh, yeah, it's great. It's a, you know, I, I think it's a, it's a, a good analogy to use. Yeah. So, so uh, a part of my question was, you know, to see, you know, from, you know, from 10 years ago to now, like how, you know, how are people reacting when they see Amroot, you know, ten, when you were, you're at a whiskey festival 10 years ago and, hmm. and, and today now, right? So, well, that's, you know, that's a good question. We have, we have a, you know, Chris here was one of the biggest collectors. I wonder when he started collecting. Yeah. You know, when do you, what, when was that kind of turning point? You know where people are like, oh, you're like, oh, hey, you really hit your stride, or we really hit our stride with. Well, with I'll, I'll tell you, in in uh, April 2010, we did uh, whiskey uh, whiskey fest in New York. Okay. We had our booth set up. We're all proud. We had uh, uh, Rick, who is the now the managing director or executive director of Amrut, uh, there, and and you know we were we had a great prime location. Uh, trying to get people in to try it, and yeah. uh, anyone of Indian origin who saw the sign saying "Army Indian Single Malt" would walk right by. They had no <laughs> <laughs> no desire to really stop and say, huh? "Let me try that." And I think part of it was because you know, and, and I, as this I said er earlier, preconceived notion, yeah. And as I said earlier, you know, going to India, uh, we all knew there wasn't anything good. There was no good Indian yeah. whiskey. Uh, that they um, knew of. That we knew of. And primarily, the Amrit being in the south, um, you know, where liquor consumption is not as broadly acknowledged as it is in the north. Um, so we, having had that sense, we basically targeted – people like Chris and, 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 and people who were the whiskey uh, aficionados, the whiskey appreciators uh, who knew, you know, all whiskey was all about. And today we have, you know, it's great. We have uh, the Indian expat community and Indian origin people uh -huh. uh, loving Amrut and being so proud of it and telling their yeah. 
non-Indian friends, hey, you got to try this. This is really yeah. good. It's almost kind of like a sense of pride thing. I think same thing happens. You know, it, I think it with, is with, now. Yeah. But then it wasn't, it wasn't, before it was like, uh, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, Alex, you yourself know from Taiwan. Taiwan, I mean, yeah. I was, I was Avalan the, first yeah, released. Was I mean, key, yeah. it was, people were like, wow, what, the Taiwanese, Taiwanese whiskey? And then, yeah. you know, it started winning awards. And, and, yeah. and you know, we were lucky because in, in 2010, you know, the um, fusion, right, uh, Jim Murray that year yeah. uh, named it third best whiskey in the world. Yeah, so I think was um, that, I guess that was kind of like a, a, a turning point, right? It was absolutely a turning point, and I'm just going to pour myself a little bit okay, of there you go. the uh, fusion. Um, and and do you have the I'm, regular? Do you have the regular single malt I here? We just do not. I, I oh, really? don't okay. have any at home. But you you're welcome. You're <laughs> okay, welcome yeah. to pour that, and everybody else has it. But uh, I have a bunch. So I, so I I think you're well. The fusion's obviously a great kind of you know kind of like a, a gateway whiskey but i think just even the standard single malt obviously this is kind of like your you know staple expression right so um, well the single malt's great because it's uh 100 indian barley yeah uh the, the barley grows up in the north of india and in, in punjab and rajasthan and then is sent down to uh the malting in delhi yeah. and then goes to, to bangalore where it's made um and you know, non-chill filtered, 46% alcohol, uh, no color added, all natural. Um, the the Indian barley is a six-row barley rather than two-row barley. Mm -hmm. So you get a, a sweeter, you get less yield, but you get um, or more concentrated flavor that comes out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's a new <laughs> label. Like people, people haven't seen a new label, a new bottle label for the single malt. And Do that. this is the the new label for the uh the fusion yeah um yeah. and the new bottle yeah you know, you know so <clears throat> it's kind of funny because you kind of see that same you see see the same thing with like Taiwanese whiskey um you know your own people sometimes are your biggest critics you know um the same thing what you're talking about with Indian whiskey a lot of people have this a lot of when this came out um you know, a lot of the people in India were like, "Oh, they just walk right by your, uh, your 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 booth and didn't want to drink even drink it, right? They didn't want to give the chance, and you needed you needed other people to actually you know give you a chance before you convert your own people." <laughs> you know? Well, it was interesting because it was um, it was purposely developed as an export only product. And yeah. um, when it started winning, Single, yeah, so same thing with Taiwan too. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, when it started winning all these awards and getting <coughs> uh, people in India would call uh, the distillery and say, where we can, where can we get this? And they were told you got to leave the country to get it. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> because it was not available. In, and now uh, it, it's starting to be available in uh, a number of States in India, but the current demand is five times more than what they can supply. Okay. Somebody asked a question. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna show share some pictures here. This is a picture of the uh, distillery, built in the '80s, I believe. Um, is that correct? Uh, late '70s. Yeah. Oh, late '70s, '80s. Yeah. It's got that. It's got that kind of like '70s, '80s kind of uh, 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 feel to it too. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that yeah. architecture. Yeah. Uh, so well, the original uh, the original distillery was uh, right in in downtown Bangalore. Um, and it's now the site of where the corporate office is. Right. Um, and then they, they had this land and they built the uh, distillery. Uh, and now I don't know if you, you showed the video the other night, but if you want to run the video now, if you can, okay, can, uh, I'll show people, we can show people the new whiskey distillery. I will do that. So this is what's cool. We, we upgraded to, uh, stream yard for any of those that are looking to, uh, Check something like this out. That's really cool. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay, so a couple questions here. Um, somebody asked, uh, where do you have the best traction, essentially? Where do you sell the most 
Emory was in, in, in the U.S.? Like, is there a state or is there? Yeah. Uh, so our biggest our biggest U.S. market is Texas, followed by uh, New Jersey, um, then uh, New York, uh, California, Texas. Georgia. Yeah, Texas is actually our biggest market now for Armored. Was well, it because is it just pure population or is it? No, I th I think the our distributors have done a great job. Victory Wine and Spirits uh, yeah. uh, have done an excellent job of, uh, of uh, building it up, and uh, uh, you know there is a there is a fair bit of Indian population there. But um, uh, you know, again, it um, it was not targeted for the Indian uh, community. Oh, I, meant, I, I just meant like you know Texas in general. Obviously, is a big state. Is it just because there's well, it's so a big many state, but California there. is a big state too. But California, I mean. We sell a fair bit in California. California used to be our biggest market, but now it's uh, it's Texas followed by New Jersey. Jersey, oh, okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, so somebody else asked, uh, what was the story of the Ardbeg Amrut? Was it a one-off? Ardbeg Amrut? Yeah, was there? <laughs> and Chris replies, not... wait, there was an Ardbeg Amrut? No, I'm not I familiar never... with it. Hard... I don't know. About <laughs> was there some? Was it? Was there like an Amru finish and like an art bag cast or something? Um, no, not that I'm aware of. There was yeah. a, there was a sort of um, a world uh, a world whiskey project that was done from a UK producer where they took some Amru and and uh, blended it with some Scottish malt. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it was finished in an art bag cask. Um, I mean, the only the only independent bottlings that we've had, uh, most of the independent bottlings have come from Amrit or from Blackadder, and those yeah. have usually had sherry or, or uh, there's been a rump, um, but that's it. I, I'm not familiar with an art bag finish. Okay. I think it was maybe a blend or something, or what you're saying. Could be. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I'm, I'm gonna run so this video that you share. Let's run the <laughs> video, and I'm just gonna answer. So I'll I'll read some of these. I don't know if you're gonna use questions too, but I'll read some of these questions then. All right. Hold on a second here. So make sure. So what you're see what what we're gonna show is uh, the brand new malt distillery that Armory has, which has been built next to the. Uh, the picture of the distillery you saw. Uh, this started operating in um, October last year. Uh -huh. It is strictly there to produce uh, malt, single malt whiskey. Uh, uh -huh. There are two uh, two wash stills and two spirit stills. Uh -huh. All right. And uh, so you. Well, so we can we can actually take a, we can actually see the picture of the stills right here. There's two types yep. of stills here. Yeah. You know, so one the one on the left is the wash still and the one on the right is the spirit still interesting okay so you got so so this is interesting because normally in scotch whiskey distillers you, you're, you're seeing almost kind of like the same stills <clears throat> but here you have essentially two you completely unique still designs here from this you know wash and spirits well they're yeah they're they're um pretty similar but yeah you can see that the the necks are a little different on them and yeah. uh the tops are different. Um, somebody asked, is the different color cop ring reflection? I think it's just a picture image. <laughs> yeah. actually, it, is, it is all copper uh, uh -huh. um, all the way through up and down. It's not gotcha. gold plated, <laughs> although it looks like that in the picture. Can you run the video, yeah. Alex? Yeah, let me run it. The palm trees, very, uh, very scenic. Uh, hopefully, maybe there's a little lag here. Is there all the fermentation tanks? Yeah. Are, are those are those uh, uh, temperature controlled fermentation no. tanks? No, they're not. Okay. Natural. There's the bottling line. Um, it's all. All hand, uh, hand labeling, uh, hand label, hand, hand labeled. Yep, yep. And they, it uh, seems like they have a uniform or something. They do. <laughs> yeah. See that? Yeah. Uh, women, women only get to uh, 
Touch it. Here's the uh, here's the, the, the recharge. This is cool. Are all casts recharged or just no? Ones? They're uh, um, when they get the barrels from um, uh, the U.S. They're ex bourbon casks and they're they're used a couple of times and then they will rechar them for the third and fourth use. Gotcha, gotcha. But so yeah. so they don't recondition and rechar the first time around. No, correct. Uh, gotcha. I mean they come. They come. the The barrels are um, as they are, as long as the quality is good. Oh, so this uh, this little video is going to show where um, the water uh, source is for Amrit. Um, Tell me about the aquifer. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, let's, so we have a we have a bore wall. Uh, it's about 100, 150 feet below. We bought this land, as you can turn it on, uh, full of coconut and mango orchard, and we are right beside the lake. So that's about less than 50 meters. So because of that, the water table is so good. We get such a soft water with uh, a total dissolved solids of less than 150, which is, say, it's is a soft water. So you drank it, it's absolutely brilliant. Nice. And this is what we use it for single model uh, processing. Just like Are you using this water also to proof down your whiskeys as well? Yes. Uh, so the, okay. the water comes out of there, uh, then it's trucked to the distillery. It's about a, a mile and a half from the distillery, um, and and it's used down to, to proof and also to, to all the distillation. So it's okay. uh, it's natural water. It's it's from a, a deep well, a deep bore well. Um, they <clears throat> they don't you know they use it naturally. It doesn't have any uh minerality nice. or chemicals to it it's uh yeah you know i can see i don't know if you saw victoria drinking right from it in fact yeah you know we all drank right from uh, uh the, the spigot coming out well you know so so i don't do when, when you go to distillery do they have like a class on terms of the water because you have actually kind of this divide in terms of some people say water makes a big difference and some people say oh water doesn't make a difference you know and actually i had this it was kind of funny because i interesting because i had this conversation with um uh um chris morris from woodford reserve and i also had this conversation yeah. with uh um uh, mr shinji fukuyo from uh, from Suntory. And they're on the camp of water does make a difference, but it has to be natural water. You can't you can't just use like tap water or distilled water, which has no additional kind of uh, natural quote unquote ingredients. Um, 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 so if you're doing RO reverse osmosis, or you're doing any kind of those uh, other treated waters, and then it doesn't really add much to the flavor. But if it's like a natural spring or a natural source like Woodford or like, um, you know, in Hakushu uh, in Japan, uh, then they say this this is kind of one of the things that makes our whiskey special. Do you guys have that same kind of mantra or? Well, I mean, I, I'm a believer in the, the, the school that water makes very little difference. Okay, uh, you are. <laughs> in, during in, during the distillation process, you have you have to, have to uh, heat or boil the water. Right, every 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 yeah. step of yep. the distillation process, the water is a higher temperature. So, when but are you, you using heat, that water for fermentation too? Or? Yeah, yeah. All uh, the okay. same source of water gets used for yeah. everything. Okay, but I mean, you're adding the water to it, but during. I mean, the uh, when you boil water, uh, you're yeah. distilling water, or you're going through osmosis, reverse osmosis, yeah. to strip the minerality out of it, right? Because you don't want, uh, I mean, obviously you don't want salt water added to whiskey, right? That's right. Not, that's not going to do much. Um, so, I mean, even out of Scotland, a lot of the Scottish distilleries go, oh, "Our water, our water, our water." Uh, most distilleries, you know, especially the Diageo-owned distilleries. Yeah. They all warehouse at uh, a central central location, right? Most of mm -hmm. most of the warehousing is in Glasgow, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they are using the same source of water, uh, Glasgow City water, to dilute down the whiskeys, right? So, you know, you have you have whiskeys from fifty different distilleries that are all in the same warehouse capacity, and yeah. they're all using the same water source before they're bottled. Right, right, right. So, I mean, unless you're, you know, the only point that the water truly makes a difference is 
uh, when you're diluting it down. Um, yeah. And but if you're using the same source of water, how much difference is that making? Yeah. Also, so there is there is also you know people say it does make a difference in terms of the fermentation because there are those extra minerals and um, extra organics that aid in the fermentation and create additional flavors. But you know, but <laughs> we won't we won't get well, into that. We won't get into that too much here. But I think primarily, <clears throat> primarily in fermentation, the flavor profile is coming from the the yeast that's being. Used. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the but water used, again doesn't. If you use the same yeast and you use tap water and then you use, you know, uh, in, in this situation, you use tap water and you, and you control in a control situation, you use tap yeah. water and you use uh, uh, and you use natural, you know, spring water with those extra uh, minerals and whatnot, you know, which is also uh, nutrients for the, the yeast. Uh, anyways, <laughs> it's OK. Um, well, I think. Uh, but you know what i don't know if anyone's done an experiment but certainly yeah once you've done the fermentation and you get into distillation you're stripping a lot of that yeah uh, you are, those elements you are. out of it right so the this the new make spirit that comes out of that is not going to be affected by the water that's been used gotcha gotcha right um all right so uh, I actually, you know, go to, to actually kind of uh, uh, backtrack a little bit because you were talking about uh, Indian whiskey. Um, you know, sometimes people don't, you know, may not even think or relate whiskey to India, but there is a long, long history of whiskey drinking in India, right? Like it, it is, it is the principal, essentially principal spirit in India. Well, um, India is the largest. Per yeah. capita consumer of whiskey in the world, and I and I think um, people don't really know that. You know, people don't even expect well, that people think it, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a misnomer, only because most of what is sold as whiskey in India, yeah, could not be sold as whiskey anywhere else. Because, right. as I said earlier, it's a hundred percent neutral molasses sourced yeah. spirit. That then has, you know, it's still aged, but then it has some, uh, either some imported, uh, imported foreign malt right. liquor, IMFL added to it, or it's some blended malt. whiskey. Yeah, it's it's a blended whiskey. It has, but primarily, uh, you know, it's it's mostly a, a neutral malt, a neutral molasses spirit that has some flavored whiskey, some flavoring added to it from whiskey. Um, yeah. So that, you know, that is like officer's uh, challenge or royal challenge or officer's choice, choice is the biggest selling whiskey in the world. Um, you know, in that category, they sell, I don't know how many millions of cases get sold in India. You know, there is 600 million uh, liters of, uh, sorry, 600 million cases of whiskey sold in India per year. Yeah, here we go. Here's the officer's, officer's choice. choice. You know, and, and, and so if you look at it, I mean, yeah, sure, India's got a billion, 1.2, 1.3 billion people. Um, but if you strip out the uh, underage, the uh, people who don't drink for religious reasons, the uh, yeah. there's a large female population who don't drink, uh, the young people, blah, blah, blah. You know, you're still left with maybe 400 million people who drink. Um, so it's, uh, uh it's, yeah. you know, uh, one Ridiculous. point, uh, whatever, uh, you know, there's a lot of whiskey that <laughs> yeah. is being consumed. A lot of spirits are being consumed. Um, right. Right. You know, and, and, uh, but I think what's happening in India now is that the, um, uh, the taste profile is changing as, as more people are, um, working abroad or traveling abroad, yeah. um, they are getting an appreciation for, uh, single malt whiskeys for better quality whiskeys. And so now you're starting to see uh, more distilleries in India producing and releasing single malt whiskeys and trying to produce the higher quality. So they're getting away from what happened in the 70s when the flavor was dumbed down to going back to more uh, higher flavored whiskeys. You know, I mean, the same, let's, you know, the, the blends, even in Scotland, the same thing happened in the 60s and the 70s and uh 60s 80s, late 60s yeah. early 70s where less uh malt was being put into the blends 
they reduce the amount of malt whiskey and and put more grain alcohol into it. Yeah. yeah. So if you take, uh, for example, if you take a Johnny Walker uh, black or red from the 40s or 50s and compare it to what's available today, yeah. it's a totally different product. Yeah. 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 Uh, which is the same thing have- happening. And here What's we that? have a picture, and, we, and here we have a picture of the officer's choice here. Yes, yes. It's actually interesting because we do. I, I've, I actually spotted these bottles, officer's choice bottles, in New Jersey, and I had no idea they were even for sale. So these bottles, they actually go like red and blue, and they go for about ten bucks. And yeah. just an interesting, interesting. So this is you know uh, blended with um, essentially neutral or or, or, or just grain sport. Neutral spirit, not neutral grain spirits, because it's made from molasses. Neutral spirit. Yeah. And some statistics I came across in my research, and actually I talk about this a little bit in my classes as well. Uh, roughly about uh, thirty, was it thirty million? Oh no, se- I'm sorry, it's uh, thirty million cases sold of Officer Choice a year. Correct. Uh, uh, compared to a Johnny Walker, which is the number one selling whiskey in the world, they come in at 17 million cases. Yeah. And, and compare that to Jack Daniels and Jim Beam at 12 and 8 million cases. Right. So Officer's Choice, you can just see, you know, pretty much, you know, outsells, you know, doubles uh, what Johnny Walker sells out there. And Officer's Choice is primarily just in India. So it's... It's yeah, it, it, it's it, huge. The, it's ridiculous. The, the export version that you see in Jersey <laughs> is different than what's sold in India. I mean, you can you can see this obviously has caramel color added to it. Uh, right. It is yeah. filtered. Yeah. Uh, who knows what else is in it? But uh, yeah, you know, it it is the largest selling whiskey, uh, and I use the word whiskey Quote, lately uh, in the world. Quote unquote whiskey, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, there's a there's a saying, Alex, in in uh, that in India, there's more Johnny Walker Black sold in India than is produced in the world. Oh, uh, okay, okay, that's, be, that's because there's a lot of fake <laughs> yeah, right. it, Johnny Walker Black. You know, and it's everyone asks. You know, when when we used to go visit India, our relatives would always say, "Oh, bring bring Johnny Walker Black, bring Johnny Walker Black." That's what they wanted. Yeah, they want the real one. Um, oh, there's wow, that's an old one. Yeah, so I, you know, so I came across this one. So you know, whiskey and whiskey drinking uh, in India is obviously tied to British colonialism, and uh, and this bottle was a bottle from eighteen hundreds, from eighteen fifty five, I believe. Eighteen. Uh, eighteen fifty five hmm. at the okay. Solon Distillery. Yeah, which uh, was the first distillery, yeah. uh, whiskey distillery in India in the north, and it was actually set up by uh, Robert Dyer, Ro- who was Edward Dyer. British, yeah. yeah, Edward Dyer. He was a British uh, army officer who yeah. loved whiskey and uh, established this distillery up in uh, the north of India. Uh, it is yeah. uh, the lo- oldest operating distillery in India. Yeah, yeah, and um, so it's just, so you know people might not even know this and. And it's just there's there's this huge history. There's this long hundreds, you know, you know hundreds hundred year or a plus history of whiskey and everything. And uh, yeah. um, and I think it also has to do with economics, right? Like you know you have you know uh, the the economy in India doing better and better and better, and people have more expendable income. They're looking for better whiskey, obviously. Uh, and then so you know single malts obviously going to be. Uh, um, um, doing better as well, right? And I think yes. there. I, th- I think I read some articles where they're talking about um, India also does a really good job of protecting its own industries, right? So if you're making, uh, if you're a whiskey producer inside India versus if you're a whiskey producer, let's say you know like a Diageo or something outside of India trying to sell in, they do. There's a lot of tariffs there, right? Um, there, there's actually. Um... <laughs> Uh, that's not actually true. There's the, true? the okay. tariffs. The tariffs are there. Uh, there's high taxes, uh, alcohol tariffs and taxes. Um, on all whiskey? And it's actually higher on foreign whiskey but than it is on domestic. But um, if you, as a domestic producer, if you want to be able to sell in different states, 
you have to prove, uh, you either have to pay an exorbitant fee. So like Omrud had to pay $25,000 US okay. dollars just to be able to sell in Mumbai. Um, okay. But if you're a, if you're a large producer like Diageo or who can say, oh, we sell uh, X amount around the world, uh, here's our total sales, you actually are grandfathered in and can get and to sell into other states. So gotcha. it's it's a little more challenging for domestic producers to sell really? than, oh, okay. than foreign producers. Um, but, you know, that's changing. I mean, Amrit's now available in, I think, about 15 <clears> to <throat> 20 states in India. So, um, you know, it's, it's it's growing and they've they've had to introduce some uh, domestic only products. So somebody asked that early, what's available in India from Amrit that's not yeah. available. So Amalgam is a, a whiskey uh, that is it's a malt whiskey it's not a single malt it's a malt whiskey that's only available in india gotcha yeah. uh, a couple of questions popped up uh our friend charlie says is all the juice going to barrels now coming from the new distillery or is demand uh, such all, that of the, is all of the malt is the the new distillery is only doing uh single malt the old distillery is still doing peated malt okay gotcha yeah. And then with the with the pandemic, how quickly and and how quickly whiskey matures in Bangalore? What does this mean for bottling? Uh, well, so the angel share uh, or the maturity, as we talked about, you know, in 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 Bangalore yeah. is ten to fifteen percent a year uh, yeah. loss compared to one to two percent, three percent in Scotland. Um, yeah. So we like to say one year in India is like uh, three years in Scotland. Um, yeah. So you do get rapid uh, accelerated maturation. Uh, so I like to talk about maturation rather than age. Yeah. Um, you know, most like the single malt that Alex has up here is about four years old. Um, mm -hmm. But in, you know, in comparison purposes, it's probably more like a, a 12 to 15 year old scotch. Um, yeah, single malt, and the so you know we benefit. Uh, Amrit benefits from that. Um, they are Bangalore is three thousand feet above sea level. It's in the south interior of India, so uh, doesn't have any of the maritime influence. Uh, has lower humidity, um, so it's very similar to Kentucky. Um, Ashok, who is the uh, uh, managing uh, the story manager now. Uh, likes to say that Armored is the missing link between Scotland and Kentucky. Okay. So we're making right. single malt, but we're benefiting from the uh, type of maturity that goes on in Kentucky. You know, you mm -hmm. because it's drier in Bangalore, the alcohol strength actually goes up. So in, you know, in seven or eight years, you end up with a spirit that's in the 70s. Oh, um, wow. You know, so it's uh, they're bottling at 62 and a half and you end up with about 73, 74 uh, percent. Oh, wow. So very similar to like George D. Stag. Yeah. You know, kind of kind of thing that goes on. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I so I so I guess the 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 current like shutdown and everything is it's not really affecting bottling that much. Right. I guess it's just a couple. It's not. I mean, they're still they're still continuing to produce. I mean, India, India is on a shutdown and essential services only like every where else um, they um, I think they're still producing, but um, I don't know if they're bottling. I mean, they there's the, uh, alcohol sales have not shut down. So they're still being sold uh, is producing hand sanitizer uh, along with the rest of the uh, distilleries mm -hmm. and breweries in uh, Karnataka, which is the state where uh, Amrit is based. Um, you know, it's ironic because back in 1948, when Armory mm -hmm. Distillery was first set up, um, it was established to provide uh, neutral alcohol to be used for their pharmaceutical division uh, oh, that okay. the family had. So <laughs> they're going back to the roots in a way to produce uh, yeah. uh, a denuded alcohol to be used in uh, hand sanitizer. Yeah, yeah, and, and actually, I, I, I didn't get a chance to also touch on that, but Amroot Distillery or the brand has been around since the '40s, so it's, it's a long. Was, yeah, what, yeah, 1948 was when the distillery was established. Uh, so you know, the year after we kicked the Brits out. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, and it's interesting because um, you also, well, you know, this is a sidebar and un unrelated to Amroot, but it's related to Glass Revolution, but you also uh, bring in Hammerhead, right? Yep. Yep, Hammerhead. And that's a Czech single malt, which is another one of those whiskeys where you're like, and, and you ha it's, they have like these 25, like 30 year, you know, yep. 20, 25, you know, Czech single malts. And you're like, when the, when the heck did, you know, people in Czech Republic make single malts? It's like one of those, and I had it and it's, and it's like such a great whiskey, but it's just like one of those like secrets, right? So people didn't think like, you know, uh, people, you know, people are making whiskey in the forties and fifties or sixties or whatnot. But then, you know, you have hammerhead doing this, you know, this kind of gives people that same idea that, <clears throat> oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Plug. Yeah. The 30 year old. So yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, we, um, <laughs> on the topic of this like, the, yeah, on the topic of yeah. distilleries that you never heard of and you come, come they out started with making, like beer uh, whiskeys. Yeah. In, in the seventies <laughs> when communist regime was still going on in, in, uh, that part of the world, um, the, uh, the Czechoslovakian rulers, uh, uh said, yeah. Uh, to the distillery, the only distillery that was there, the Prado distillery, uh, you will make single malt, you will make whiskey. Yeah, <clears> and whiskey. they said, we don't know how to make whiskey. And they said, no, you'll make whiskey. Um, okay. So you didn't, you didn't argue <laughs> with the, uh, the leaders. The um, royalty. So yeah, exactly. they didn't know, they didn't know how to make it. They started researching how to do it. So the name actually Hammerhead comes from the hammer mill that they use yeah. to crush the barley. Um, yeah. And so the only stipulation was that it had to be uh, everything local. So they used Czech oak, uh, European oak, um, yeah. Czech barley. Yeah. They found some uh, um, peat up in uh, northern part of Czechoslovakia that they used some of that to, to help uh, uh, dry the barley. Um, at one point, they allegedly uh, were able to smuggle in some uh, railway cars full of peat yeah. from Scotland. Uh, that they use for part of their pro it's so process. Good. It's yeah, and it's, and, then, and, and, it's, and it's you know it, for a thirty year whiskey, you're not paying like you know a, a, you know like a Scotch whiskey that's thirty years old. You know, you're, well, you're you're, so the this is uh, uh, we just bottled this. We just released it. It's a U.S. exclusive. There's only three hundred yeah. bottles. Uh, it's a single barrel. Um, it's uh, it's four twenty five retail. I think. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, well yeah, I mean, consider, you know, like, you know, like, you know, I don't want to name names, but like consider like a Scotch whiskey, a, a big brand Scotch whiskey for 30 years. You're you're looking at probably like 800 bucks, 900 bucks, yeah. you know, seven, yeah. eight hundred, nine bucks for yeah. that. You know, that's almost like an IB 30 year, you know, like, right. uh, which is good. Anyway, si sidebar there. Um, <laughs> but it's just one of those things that, you know, you just never know. You know this whiskey world is just so many surprise, you know, delightful surprises. You know, and, and a couple of people actually ask here, uh, and I think everybody's in waiting anticipation here. Um, two people ask, when is the spectrum coming out? And we did touch ah. on that earlier. <laughs> so you mean you mean this? Yeah, right here. Yeah, right there. I, I, you know, spectrum is one of those whiskeys. You know, there's there's some whiskeys where you drink and you're like, oh, that's nice. And there's some whiskeys you drink and you're like, oh, you know, so and spectrum is, was one of those whiskeys. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> so this is the first Spectrum. Uh, this was not available in the U.S. Uh, this is my, I haven't even opened this bottle. Um, this yeah. was the. Yeah. Um, That's a collector's uh, item right there. Yeah, it's the five. So there was the five different barrel staves that were used. And then what we had come into the U.S. <laughs> was the four. Um, and. Uh, they, uh, we will have a new spectrum later this year, and uh, which will be, I think it's the four, and then we'll do the five uh, early yeah. in 2022, uh, 2021. Um, so it is, it is coming back. Um, but you know, it obviously takes time because yeah. they, they take the single malt first, um, the cast strength single malt, and then, then it goes into these specially designed barrels for another three or four years for further mm -hmm. maturation before it's released. So it is a, it's a little labor intensive. The costs of the casks are obviously expensive because you're, you're building these special yeah. barrels that have uh, four uh, staves from four or five different types of barrels that are, that are in there. Um, but 
but I, uh, I, I was able to taste a sample of the one that will be released uh, this year, and it is quite spectacular. Drool. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Chris, uh, you know, can, can we see that bottle again that you just had? That was, that you know, so Chris, I think, was drooling too. Um, so this was this was one of the original spectrums. This was this is the original spectrum. Yeah, that's yeah. what it looks this like. Is, this Actually, is batch, kinda, number, I batch number one. I uh, batch number one, October twenty fifteen. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. So Chris is going to DM you about you know how much you want for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not selling it. This one. I, the reason I the reason I have this is because it's it. For some reason, it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't filled all the way uh, to the right level, but uh, but I was gifted this by the distillery, and, and I'm certainly planning to hold on to it. So yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so, we will have some coming in this year, and uh, we um, there's a there's there will also be a couple of other uh, surprises, uh, good nice things coming in. Yeah. And it's cool because, you know, you, you're seeing such like innovation, you know, with uh, 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 the Narangi. Is that how I'm, I'm pronouncing that right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Nar Narangi. Narangi, yeah. You know, so you got yeah. the the citrus cask, yeah. essentially, right? And then you yeah. have just so much stuff going on. And, and, and I think, like, it's great because in India you can see the experimentations um, um, happen a lot faster. For example, like if I wanted to do the Narangi and I only have to wait four years to see how it turns out before I bottle it versus like, you know, in Scotland, I have to, I'm doing the experimentation. I have to wait like 12 years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, yeah. or longer yeah. to see how the experimentation turns out. So I think it's also really great for experimentation uh, because of the climate. <clears throat> One thing that uh, I'm really, recently released was a uh, single grain okay recipe. oh cool Very um nice. this made bottles for the u.s a single barrel uh -huh. um you know again it was an experiment that they wanted to try and i know i know chris has a bottle of it and he he's looking for more so uh is it good it, 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 i think Very it good? speaks well i think it's good chris okay. what do you think Very good. <laughs> I don't know, chris is still think? on um yeah I'm and uh this I don't know if 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 anyone ever had the Amrit single malt rye, yeah, one hundred percent malted rye. This is cool. This is cool. This yeah, this was really uh, there's not a lot of one hundred percent malted ryes out there, um, but this was one hundred percent. They I didn't know why they didn't use Indian rye, but they used European rye for this. This is mm -hmm. most of the rye came from uh, um, I think Denmark, and okay. um, it was it was all malted though. And using it. it was the uh, first ever Indian single malt rye. It was interesting, yeah. yeah. And bourbon casks. So, so Amru does predominantly like most distilleries use uh, uh, bourbon casks to do correct. maturation, correct? Okay. And then, so like for something like this, like the single malt here, uh, um, um, we're looking at. There's no sherry or anything like that. This is all bourbon cask. Right? It's it no. It's uh. It's a combination of new okay. oak and um bourbon. It's uh, probably about uh eighty eighty to eighty five percent uh, bourbon with the balance being new oak. So they'll okay. they'll take uh, you know the different barrels, fat them together before they're bottled. Okay, awesome. Yeah. That's uh. I'm, I'm gonna just take a little sip and share just kind of like my. Tasting those, and why don't you drink your fusion, and then you can talk a little bit about get to the drinking part here. Um, you know, so and root to you know just on this or here, I have you know the I have also the uh, single cast, ah. the American single cast, right? Um, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and I have here the uh, port cask, which is I haven't even opened this one yet. The this, was one, this was one of my favorite and roots. Uh, oh, there you go. Well, we can maybe drink that one together a little bit later. And I also have a Taiwan exclusive um, uh, PX cask. This is like, hmm. this is like, you know, maybe, you know, I have to, I have to get you a sample of this or something. Um, but this is like just so PX. It's just like, you know, maple syrup 
PX, you know, it's, it's just yeah. so rich. Um, but just on a note, hey, Alex, uh, sorry, Alex, that, that Bengal tiger, was that the U S Bengal tiger or the, uh, the U S Bengal tiger. This was yours. So that's the, uh, peated, uh, port, yeah, right? Peated port. Yeah, this is a peated port. Okay. So the Bengal tiger, for those of you who keep hoping for another <laughs> Bengal tiger, um, there will never, there will never be another one in the U S. Uh, yeah, yeah. we, uh, we we were we use that label illegally. That that label actually belongs <laughs> to the Taiwanese importer, uh, yeah. and who also is the Canadian importer. Um, so we were then told we had to get our own label. So that's why we came up with the uh, Atma. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So we yeah. used an elephant instead of a tiger. Um, and this new release is the peated uh, port cask. So very similar to the. Uh, the first Bengal tiger. Um, yeah. This is a six and a half year old, um, but it's a hundred percent peated barley um, aged in port pipes. Yeah, and you guys did. So I, I got my hands on the uh, Abma uh, Oloroso a few months yeah. back, and that's a treat as well. Um, yeah, that but, was. But... And then we did the first. Uh, then we did the first one. We did was a uh, uh, unpeated bourbon um cask so all right i will i will i will join you in this one alex so. what the uh single malt are you you're, well, no, you you're doing the uh, bengal you tiger right which is which is similar which is similar to the uh Atma. was that that was bottled at uh was was the cat the strength on that uh this one is uh 56.5 oh so same 56.5 well, yeah, this is yours. This is yours. No, no, I know, but the Atmas are also 56.5. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So this is the same. It's, you, you it's, have uh, this one? You have this one with you right now? I have it. I, I, I have it. I don't have it he, I don't have it readily available, but I do okay, have it. Right. You're, so you're, you're drinking the Atma right now? I'm drinking but it's exa it's the same. It's the peated uh, port. The oh, it's the same. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. It's a different batch, but it's the same. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. So, so to talk about the single malt, the single malt, uh, real quick is just, you know, Amru to me on, on the nose is just very lovely just because you get so many florals. It's just so, such a pronounced nose. Um, and like, you know, like, uh, like the research, like, like the, the original research, uh, thesis would suggest that it's just so that kind of space side, maybe Highland um character here and it's just it's floral it's fruity on the palate it's clean uh, uh got a bit of grip mm. yeah and interesting that 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 sort of natural sweetness that's in there comes from the indian barley uh the six row barley produce yeah. you know it has it, it's a <clears throat> building obviously because it's smaller granules but it does produce a richer, more uh, intense um, uh, spirit. So yeah, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about this six row versus two row. Um, you know what what makes it special, and uh, um, how how does that affect the whiskey? Well, so obviously two row is what's mostly used in mm -hmm. in in Scottish or European production single malt. So the Granules are bigger. You get uh, more of a yield that comes out of there. The um, uh, Indian barley is is uh, six rows, so you get six granules per row rather than two. Um, so when you uh, you know take the barley out and, and dry it and crush it, you're getting a lower yield. Um, it has lower carbohydrates, more protein, um, and and again producing a lower yield. So you're getting uh, a little more sugar content, um, so obviously giving you a little richer flavor profile than you would get from a uh, a two row barley. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so I so we so you did mention that the six row has more protein content, right? You said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then right. so more somebody protein. did say it adds this kind of like the spiciness to it. Or this more additional. It, it does add a little it. spiciness. Yeah, you get a little more spiciness to it, but you also get a little more sweetness in there. Um, you know, it, it, slightly. I mean, it, again, let's you know keep in fact that most of the flavor of whiskey is coming from the barrel, mm -hmm. right? The the raw materials obviously contribute a, a certain percentage to it, 
um, but 60 to 70 percent of the flavor comes from the barrel. Nice. Couple yeah. questions. Chris says, when will uh, MA get the Atma port? Uh, as soon as it's ready to ship, uh, where obviously given the current situation, um, retailers are not buying a lot, and, and uh, but it it is ready to ship to MA whenever uh, the markets reopen up. And then it says, Alex, another Alex asks, uh, will the Peter, Peter Rum Greedy Angels hit the U.S.? Yeah, right. Yeah, it's already in the U.S. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's it's here now. Um, where is it? This is it here. The Peter Rum uh, Greedy Angels. Can you see it? Uh, sorry. Yeah, Peter Rum Finish. Uh, that is in my warehouse uh, ready to ship. Um, it actually, I think it's... It's already in Massachusetts and uh, a couple of other markets, Texas maybe. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, again, timing-wise, we weren't able to get all of it out before the uh, coronavirus situation hit. Yeah. Um, but it is, uh, it, it's interesting because this was actually, um, so it's all 100% peated barley. It was finished in Armroot's uh, own rum barrels. So they make uh, a couple of rums. Um, and this was in their 100% Jaggery rum barrels. Okay, nice. Yeah. Um, okay, so you're drinking you're drinking this Atma port, Peter Port, right? <clears throat> yeah, so uh, I don't know when that, I can't remember the one you have, Alex, when it was uh, distilled. Mine was... Uh, distilled in 2013 of april and bottled in january 2020 uh date of filling is march 2013 and date of okay. buying is october 2017. uh so yours is younger than this one yeah yeah, yeah. um so it's a little more intensity and flavor um, hundred percent peated, and obviously there being no peat in India, they get the yeah. barley peated in Scotland uh, to their specifications. All the uh, barley is peated um, by beard malting in Inverness. Uh, yeah, for specifications and shipped over to the distillery uh, for everything else. Gotcha. And then um, I know, and, and and people people love to know PPMs and stuff like that. We know. So yeah, Amrit yeah. uh, doesn't do a heavy uh, peat count. Um, they, you know, and obviously PPM is one of those things that do you yeah. measure it at the time it's peated? <clears throat> do you measure it at the time it comes off the still lad or do you measure it uh, before it gets bottled? Um, but for distillation purposes, um, Amrit gets about a, a 25 to 30 PPM. Um, at the at the malting facility, but by the time it gets to the distillery, the uh, uh, P, the PPM is already dissipated a little bit, and by the mm -hmm. time it's distilled, so in the yeah. bottle, if you just look at the peated uh, uh, regular or the peated cast strength, um, you're probably looking at about eighteen to twenty PPM. Yeah. Okay. That's a medium, yeah. medium uh, parts per million. Medium, yeah. Yeah, low medium. yeah, and 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 don't forget too, it's it's inland peat. It's not islet peat, so you're not going to get that iodine or um, it's a dry peat. Yeah, yeah. So just on the nose here, I'm getting a lot of just kind of like this barbecue, this kind of drier peat. Um, yeah, I get a lot of pork belly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Very. This, uh, this would make a great barbecue sauce. Yeah, right. Expensive one. <laughs> well, I, I'm talking about sauce for the person doing the barbecuing. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just it's just very again, it's just that you know, Eric, that distillery character, the Amber distillery character, is such as like you know, pronounced nose, um, getting a little bit of those esters, those fruitiness, um, but also like you know, you, you you're not getting those kind of like top heady notes as much um mm. you know so w when when you're nosing maybe like a younger whiskey or anything like that you know you're getting maybe the, that sharpness that vibrancy that 
yeah. that kind of like those heady notes are kind of like astringent, um, um, you know, ethanol kind of thing. But you, but this is very comfortable. Like I'm using this 1920s uh, blenders glass, yeah, and I can put my nose like, you know, right on there, and I'm not getting that. You know, my my nose hairs are not getting singed. <laughs> you right. know, uh, and this is you know 50 some ABV. Right, so it's a, it's a very rounded, it's very balanced nose, versus like you know you know we we you you, you try some other fifty sixty ABV and you feel, if I get this close and I'm just like oh you know yeah. I, you can't get yeah. this close because it burns your nose but this is right. so you know just very comfortable it's very uh, uh, I think that um, that's reflective of uh, Amri uses the larger uh, longer fermentation period. Um, mm -hmm. and, and also their cuts that they're taking, you know, they're, they're doing some narrower cuts. So they're getting a richer spirit. Uh, you're okay. not getting those high esters and easters that you would get. Um, you know, if you, if you did a, a bigger cut, um, so they're right. really yeah. controlling, controlling that. Okay. So that's great that we, you know, kind of perfect segue, uh, into, um, what well, we, here we go. Let me see here. Uh, you know, so you shared some pictures with me um, yeah. of the distillery here. When we're talking about fermentation. Here's your uh, yeah, the fermentation so six fermentation tank. tanks. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Stainless steel. I see. You said they are not temperature controlled. Correct. Right. So, so do you guys have like a there's a some there's like a summer shutdown kind of thing. No, they actually operate year round. Uh, really? Yeah, they um, they do try. I mean. There is in the summer there. Well, I mean, don't forget in even in the summer in, in Bangalore, it gets into about one, one twenty, one twenty five yeah. uh, during the day. But the uh, humidity is is lower. The humidity only goes up to about 75 percent. Um, so they do have on some of the fermentation tanks, they do have uh, cold water circulating. OK, so, okay, so, yeah, there, so, is, so they can they can use that to bring it down a little bit. Because I was wondering, because I was like, with with India being so hot, like you know, this you know, if you're ferment, fermenting, you know, in that hot temperature, like you know, the yeast will essentially just die. Yeah, uh, no. This is so hot. yeah, so they, so they, 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 they monitor cool. that. There's um, the I don't know if, I can't remember if it's on that the wall that you see there or the other wall, but they do have um, readouts about the temperature and. Uh, uh, what's happening on there so they they do monitor it uh but these are you know these are all brand new uh yeah city fermentation tanks yeah shiny brand new shiny fermentation tanks and yeah. um and you said you and you said they ferment longer like uh how much longer or how how long they ferment? uh they're doing um i can't remember the total i think it's 72 to 96 hour fermentation okay gotcha yeah. So it's like yeah. So it's like three, four days. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So is Emru playing around with like yeast at all? Or are they? Are they? No, using they 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 haven't uh, experimented with yeast. They're sticking to the same strain that they've used. They're using a a brewer's yeast strain. Okay. Okay. Um, standard, the standard. only thing the only thing that they're yeah the only thing that uh, Ashok when he took over. Um, the sealing operations last year, um, he changed um, he changed some of the fermentation periods, and he also has experimented with the uh, the cuts that they're taking. Gotcha. Okay. And then, so cuts? Do they, do they tell you like what percentage of the, uh, the entire run are they taking in terms of cuts? Because like you have like McAllen saying, "Oh, we're only taking like fifteen or twenty percent of our cuts," you know, so you're getting that. You know, only the 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 the. the, the I doubt. The, I doubt they're taking. I doubt they're taking fifteen or twenty percent of the cuts. <laughs> that would produce very small uh, production. Um, yeah, well, you know, yeah, that's what they say. But yeah, um, no, I, I I I sincerely doubt that. No, Amrit's taking. Uh, <laughs> I, I have I have it written down somewhere, but I think it's uh, it's around 65 sixty two, percent, maybe. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. And, I mean, uh, and don't, I mean, don't forget all distilleries take the, the tails and the head, the heads go back into the secondary fermentation, right? So you're, you're putting that back in. All right. So I want to share um, a couple of these other 
There's other pictures here. Here's the distill. There's these are the stills we saw these earlier. Yep. <coughs> so they are they uh, are all. I think somebody asked earlier. Is it it's a different cop? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's all 100% copper. Uh, what looks darker? Uh, uh, the con the um, um, sorry con condensation uh, condensers are a little, a little darker, but they're. Yeah. They're not. They're all. They're all copper. Hundred percent copper. Yeah. It might, yeah. It might just be like you know different shades of copper. I guess I don't know. Uh, or maybe that's just the the. Uh, uh, all right, and uh, let's take a look at these other pictures here. They're not professional f uh, photographs. I took those when I was at the distillery <laughs> yeah. in August. So uh, blame me for the lighting condition. There's that's a show uh, showing off show. one of the fermentation tank so um some of you may have met ashok but he uh still is the the global brand ambassador and he is also now in charge of all distilling at uh Amrit for the uh, only for the malt whiskeys okay so he so he's the master distiller in this well he he hasn't taken the well, title master distiller. distiller he doesn't he doesn't believe in that but he is head of distilling and uh He's the one who came up with the idea behind Spectrum, uh, Narangi, yeah, any of the sort of unique things that have happened. Um, the single grain that I showed you earlier, those are all uh, Ashok's ideas. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then one other picture we have here. We have this one here. Which I'm, I'm guessing this is like a... Uh, uh, um, the mill here, or you know, where the grains fall in here. Uh, yeah, that's uh, so the uh, that's where the up up top up uh, uh, above that is where the uh, barley would have been milled, and then it comes down the chute and gets fit into the uh, um, mash tun. Okay, so this is the mash tun. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and. Uh... So wait, so this is how, so this mash ton is different than, okay, so, oh, so this, okay, so this, you just, this, there's only one mash ton here, and then everything uh, is I, I think that's only one picture that I took, uh, I think there's two mash tons. I'm pretty sure if I'm reading, if I'm looking at it correctly, but that is, that is the hopper where the um, yeah. barley is coming down right. and being fed into there. Yeah, so the grain's up top, yeah, goes into the mash ton, and then flows into the into the fermenters that we saw earlier correct and uh and here these here we have uh, here we have the uh the spirits spirit tanks spirit receivers yep. Yep. <clears throat> those are so they're using a lot of gravity flow for that and then um they're also they're being very um, ecological. A lot of the waters being uh, any of the wastewater is being reused and going up to the top to uh, provide energy. Uh, they have solar panels up uh, up top um, under the distillery too to provide uh, energy for it. So uh, it's um, pretty environmentally friendly. All right. Tim is looking at the comments here. All right. All right. So I'm going to drink a little bit of this. Uh, one. Should we, let's drink the Porta Nova because you have the Porta Nova there too, right? I do have the Porta Nova. What's, uh, what's, what's everyone else drinking that's out there? Let's. Uh, let's oh, yeah. What's everyone else drinking? Uh, that's right. So Jared did say that he got two bottles of the Bengal Tiger. He was able to score two bottles of the Bengal Tiger. Yeah, I know. I know where he got them from too. So <laughs> yeah, he says from thanks to Bikram. Yeah, Bikram. Yeah. Yeah, a lot and, of people. A lot of people thank Bikram for stuff. So yeah. So Bikram, for people that don't know, he's a big supporter of the Amroot a brand in uh, yep. Uh, Massachusetts. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and, and those of you who were lucky enough to get, uh, Bikram did a, a single cask selection last year. Uh, 
That was a seven-year-old bourbon cask. Um, I think it's sold out now. And it was quite spectacular. Um, yeah. And um, I just I just worked with him to pick two new uh, barrels that he's going to get as single casks. Um, but unfortunately, they were they were going to ship by the end of March. But now, because of uh, the current situation, um, we probably yeah. won't see those ship until August. Yeah. So, and I was all set to go to the Amu dinner. Yeah. Uh, I think and we're that, gonna we're gonna have that hopefully in May or June, but uh, it's still gonna go forward. So. Yeah. Yeah. Ho well, hopefully June or hopefully end of May. Yeah. Um, all right. So, um, what this is. Uh, so uh, for those of people who don't know, Amrut always puts the batch number and the date uh, of bottling on the back. So yeah. this is batch 23. It was bottled in December 2018. What's uh, Alex, what's yours? Oh, I love that pop. You see that? Yeah. What's your, on the back back label, what's the batch number? Uh, batch number 23, December oh, same. 2018. There you go. Yeah, so exactly oh, yeah. the same. Here we go. All right. Cheers. Excellent. So Porta Nova, um, uh, Port Nova, uh, meaning New Port, is um, in the name of an area in one of the states in India, and um, um, it also, you know, it's it, it, as as people know, India had uh, a lot of it was controlled by the British, but the French and the Portuguese also had areas that they controlled. Uh, so Porta Nova was an area uh, where the Portuguese controlled, mm. and this is 100% um, unpeated barley aged in port casks for the entire time. Um, yeah. This is a bottle of cast strength. It is 62.1% <clears throat> alcohol, um, but you would not know that yeah. from drinking this. So this is I mean, really right awesome. You know, you're getting a lot of port, a lot of uh, port yeah. characteristics on there. A lot of the grape and raisin. Yeah, yeah, a lot of grape and raisin. Um, a little Wine. bit of, a little bit of water. Well, this is really special because you don't really see as many whiskeys fully matured in port. Right. You, hear, you see a lot of finishes and things like that, and this is special because this is just. And if you just look at that color, uh, you know, it's just beautiful, beautiful color. Yeah. And it's all natural. And it's not, there's no color added to it. It's all natural. Yeah. yeah um, so it's not chill filter. Is Amru not chill filter as well? All of right. Amru is non chill filtered. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Great. Not chill non -chill filter. filter I think. And it's great because even, even, even with your single malts, this, your baseline expression is bottled at 46 ABV. Yeah, which is which is awesome, right? Because you know you're seeing you know, in any kind of whiskey, you usually see their core expression being bottled at you know forty <clears throat> or maybe forty three sometimes, but a forty six is definitely a great value. Well, when Amrit first released their single malt back in um, two thousand and four, it was chill filtered. It was forty percent, and yeah. they were adding caramel coloring. Yeah. Um, so the original releases uh, had all of that, and they uh, they were quickly told not to do that. Um, so none yeah. of the uh, none of, none of the things that came to uh, North America were chill filtered, nor had color added to them. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Does anybody want to chime in? Are they drinking anything? What's Chris drinking? Chris is you know amazing collector. Are you you know cracking open the greedy greedy angels or something? <laughs> <clears throat> oh yeah you know tell us about the greedy angels somebody did ask about that um what makes greedy angels so, special and greedy angels um cut the name comes from the uh the fact that um you know the the high amount um of angel share that Amrit loses right so uh 10 to 15 percent a year um the first greedy angels they ever released was a 12 year old Okay. Um, that was two 250 liter barrels, so a total of 500 liters. Um, after 12 years, they only had 93 liters left. Mm. So they started yeah. with 500, they had 93 liters left. Mm. 
Wow. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> there was only a very limited number of bottles that were available, and uh, they've been making more uh, off this. So this one uh, had 450 bottles worldwide. This is bottle number 51. So they always have – it's all hand-engraved, the bottle number on the back. Um, 150 bottles for the U.S. of the peated uh, rum cask. So this year they did three 10-year-old Greedy Angels. The mm -hmm. first one was um, a peated uh, sherry, uh, which is interesting because what they did in that case is they put it into sherry first. It was mm -hmm. in sherry barrels for six years, and then it went into ex-bourbon for four years. Um very unusual because mostly, usually yeah, you no, either finish right or, or put it in sherry the entire time. Uh, then we did a 10-year-old 100% um, bourbon barrel. And then this last release is peated. Uh, sorry, the la the bourbon was unpeated. And then this is peated, finished in rum, uh, jaggery rum. And jaggery, uh, jaggery is a, a, re a dried uh form of sugar um they uh, crush the sugar cane and some of the pulp and then it's in a it's a big pan like a paella pan and it's cooked down okay. until it's rock hard uh and rolled into balls and that's what a lot of families use as their sugar source so what Amr does is they reconstitute that add water to it and then distill that to make their jaggery rum and um if you if you've never had jaggery uh, go to an Indian store. You'll find it. It's available. Uh, a lot of people say it has more nutritional qualities because it has some of the pulp and fiber in it. Okay. Uh, we will have 100% jaggery rum from Amrut that we're going to bottle, and it'll be available this year, hopefully. <laughs> okay. As long as uh, as long as coronavirus doesn't go on till the end of the year, yeah. uh, we'll have it. Um, it's very unique. Uh, so. Um, the peated uh, Green Angels finished in rum cast was Armored's own rum barrels. Alex said uh, he once tried an eight year Amrut yep. Jaggery rum cask number 317 for the UK market. Okay. And he liked it more than the Greedy Angels. <laughs> was that, uh, that was. It's an eight-year uh, Amrut Jaggery rum cast. He's, yeah. you know, so he's singing the praises of the Jaggery rum cast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Jaggery um, – I'm trying to think. I probably have one somewhere. I, I probably have that same one somewhere. But, it's, yeah. yeah, it was quite good. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Black Adder has done a couple of uh, Amrut uh, finished in rum cast. They did a, a Guyanese rum cast finish, and they recently did a Nicaraguan rum cast finish. That uh the one the one uh black adder uh I think we did at our tasting that was like one of the best ambers I've ever had. That was a really great ambers. That was one of my one of my uh, private ones, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was that was delicious. That was delicious. Yeah, yeah unfortunately um, the, the black adder omelets we don't they don't produce a lot and we don't get a lot. The last yeah. two releases we got, we got like five cases of each. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, so I'm enjoying this Porter Nova right now. We talked about the nose, uh, on the, the palette and on the, the finish is just so, it's just, you know, it's so, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 it's long warming. It's just a great finish as well here. I think it's really interesting because despite the high alcohol, mm -hmm. It's. I mean, it is drying because of the alcohol quality on there, but yeah, a little grippy, it's still really yeah. approachable. It's really balanced. Um, you don't have to get that burn that you get with yeah. um, some other higher alcohol whiskeys. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's so, uh, so one of the things that's magical about Amru that I think is just because, like I was mentioning earlier, your those top, those sharp, those kind of like uh, um, 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 coarse notes yeah. are really kind of done with done away and you're really getting that just this just very pleasant experience um yeah. you know from the beginning to the middle to the end to the finish and everything um 
Yeah. And that's just, that's just a, uh, this just speaks on that kind of maturation that, that the, 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 the quality, uh, the fermentation you're talking about. Yeah. Well, I think, I think a, a lot of the, um, the, the climate where Armage based has a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think certainly that affects, you know, when, when you get, um, temperatures that vary from, uh, say 70 degrees in the winter to 130 in the summer and humidity that goes from 45% in the winter to 75% in the summer, you know, you yeah. get a lot of expansion and contraction in your barrel, right? Yeah. Uh, very, they're very lucky to have that. And I think we're very lucky to have such great whiskeys that come out of that, um, experience. Yeah. Uh, Jared just, you know, said that he's drinking one of the uh, Banquet Tigers, and he's got one open right now. He's that's what he's drinking. Nice. So, the BBQ nice. that we talked about earlier, BBQ, the BBQ. Very nice, very nice. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna plan to do. Um, we're gonna do a, 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 a live cast uh, in a couple of weeks, and I'm gonna have a show on there, um, so you'll get to get a chance to be able to talk to him directly. I uh, oh, nice. questions, but, um, you know, answer, ask any questions from the master himself about uh, uh, what I'm it's all about and what's going on. Cause um, a lot of the, the new distillery design um, was his ideas and a lot of what he's doing. Um, a lot of the experimental stuff is coming out of is, uh, is from a show ideas. All nice. right. So uh, Alex, tell us about this. Yeah, this so for this Taiwan is, exclusively, yeah. Taiwan exclusive, the PX sherry. So you don't actually yeah. see as much PX out there because most, you know, whiskeys is, uh, you know, they're using all the world stuff. Yeah. So. Uh, so this is unpeated Indian barley distilled 20, uh, 2011, December 2011, and then bottled June 2016. One of 624 bottles. Um, so four and a half years old. Yeah, four and a half years old. Um, so this is actually very interesting because, um, this is a single cast, but it didn't, it didn't seem like there was that much, uh, angel share here because it's still, it still yielded 624 bottles, you know, but, uh, <clears throat> but it would have been a, it would have been a pipe. So it would have yeah. been 700 liters or 650 yeah, yeah, yeah. liters. Yeah. 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 And yes. Yeah. So. Uh, this is also a 700 meter milliliter bottle, and um, um, but it's but it's 624 bottles still seems quite a bit even for a poor, even for a, a, a sherry butt. And, but it's uh, uh, what's the um, uh, ABV on it? 56.5. Okay, so it would so have been in had, barrel. They probably, yeah, they probably did dilute it down a little bit. Yeah, they did because legally they the highest they can release anything is sixty two point eight. Really? Yeah. So the the peated cast strength at sixty two point eight <laughs> is the highest uh, legal that they can export at. Yeah, because you know I just realized that because this is fifty six point five, this is fifty six point five, yeah. so they are yeah. controlling it. They are. They yeah. Are so don't forget. It. So that that has been diluted. I mean. They, um, the, the Greedy Angels 12 that they did the first release had a, a mini of the uh, cast strength in uh -huh. it, and the cast strength was 70, 74 point something, and they had to get oh, special wow. permission to include that in there. Wow. And then, you know, so, yeah, so the Porto Nova is 62.1. Yeah. So yeah. Peter, Peter cast strength, 62.8. Nice. That's the highest. Uh, so. so, you know, so yeah. if, if if anybody's had like, you know, some PX, you know, whiskeys and whatnot, you just, you know, you're getting that big, big, you know, dried fruits, dates, raisins, red on that nose. And it's just really rich kind of musk. Um, almost you're just biting into like, you know, a date or like you're biting into like a, a big, big juicy raisin, you know. Um, a lot of lot of nice baking spices on mm. the end there. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, super rich, super super sweet. This is a good. This is a good one. This was limited, and then I was able to score a bottle, and then it's all gone now. I think. 
Oh yeah, yeah anything super, that, that kind of label. Super raisin, yeah. super yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So anything like that, um, the Atma, um, you know, they're all limited releases. Yeah. They're all single barrels. Uh, the Bengal Tiger is a uh, single barrel for Western Canada and Taiwan. Uh, yeah. Atma is a single barrel for the U.S. So, you know, lots and, of... Uh, so so the Intermediate Sherry also, I think we should talk, we touch on that just a little <laughs> bit because that's a great, you know, because we're talking about Sherry. The Intermediate Sherry is also yeah. just a great... So that, know, that's sherry. interesting. Uh, that, was, that was one... Um, the reason it's called intermediate sherry is that it starts off in uh, bourbon cask, then it goes into sherry, and then goes back into bourbon cask. And okay. the reason that they did that was because they found if they it left out. it in sherry the entire uh, six or seven years, the sherry overtook the flavors. Yeah. So they yeah. wanted to, to uh, neutral help neutralize and keep the Amrut flavor profile. Right. Uh, the intermediate sherry is bottled at fifty seven point one, um, yeah, yeah. so which is a uh, hundred British proof. Um, it is, uh, you know, we used to get a lot of it. It's been, it hasn't been released in a couple of years because Amrit's having difficulty getting good quality sherry casks or butts to use. Um, they have been able to get some in the last few years and. When I was at the distillery in February, they agreed that they will do uh, a release each year for us. So we will have a release of intermediate cherry every year. Us as in the U.S. or yes, well for so they'll do one they'll do one but for Europe and one for the U.S. Okay, and is it just going to be intermediate cherry or is it going to be Atma? No, that's going to be intermediate cherry. Okay, gotcha. Okay, yeah. So you say, so, sure. could you repeat that again? You said you it, it starts off in sherry, then bourbon. No, it starts off. It starts off in bourbon. Bourbon, and then Goes sherry. sherry, and then back into bourbon. Back into bourbon again. Okay, gotcha. That's why it's called intermediate. So the sherry is uh, a show likes to call it a sherry sandwich. So you <laughs> the process. Yeah. It should be a bourbon sandwich then, right? Should, what is your, no, the sherry's in the middle. The sherry's in the okay. middle. Okay. The bourbon's on the end. The sherry's in the middle. The bourbon's your bread. The sherry's okay. your jam. Oh, okay. Right? Gotcha. Yeah. There you go. All right. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Um, and it's, so out of this, out of the six, what you said is six, seven years, is it just kind of two, two, two? Or is it like, you know? Uh, it's a secret, Alex. I can't tell you that. Oh, that's a secret. You have to kill me then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I, I think that's pretty much that uh, wraps it up for us. It's ten thirty. That's great. This has been a great session. You know, uh, thank you so much for spending time with us, and and uh, we had people joining from you know here in Taiwan as well as U.S. and, and PWS and Philly and whatnot. And we're big supporters, and we love uh, the M route. And, you know, it was great that we also had some super fans on here, you know, chiming in and giving some asking questions and things like that. Um, is there anything else you want to just, you know, share? No, I just want to say thank I mean, you know, these are all difficult. This is a difficult time for everybody. And, and yes. uh, um, you know, I appreciate it. I mean, this, this uh, video outreach uh, is, is, is becoming the norm. Yeah. Other than the, the unusual um but you know we all we appreciate everyone's support i mean armored still a growing brand um uh, so spreading the word getting you know people keeping it in front of people letting people know more about it um and you know it is um it is available in the market um uh, you know you're you know unfortunately uh in Pen in pennsylvania yeah, governor wolf right. has still not seen fit to open the liquor stores uh, when and if he does hopefully uh you know you'll be able to sh order again uh i know they're not um, it's not available in the stores but it is available in special order yeah. uh through the stores and through our distributor in uh pennsylvania dreadnought wine and spirits um but other if you're in other parts of the u.s um you know 
New Jersey, a lot of availability, Delaware, uh, Massachusetts, um, yeah, support your local retailers, you know, uh, yeah. get it out there, Some, support your local brands. I mean, you know, yeah. it's, it's great. You can go out and buy, uh, you know, Jack Daniels or Tito's or whatever, uh, th they will always be making it, um, yeah, yeah. they'll always be available. Um, we are, we are a small importer. Um, you know, we're, we're struggling to keep going and, um, we need, we need your support and, uh, your support of Amrit and our other brands to make sure that we are viable and that we can, yeah. we'll be here, you know, not only six months from now, but six years from now. Yeah. Yeah. So, absolutely. Thanks and everyone. Then, you know, yeah. And then so PLCB, they did open it up like some online ordering, uh, past couple yeah, of days. But that's only the stuff that they have, uh, in, in warehouse. It's not special orders. Yeah. And it's, and it's tough because, People in the, the the police in Delaware, New Jersey, they're cracking down on PA people coming over there. You know that it's crazy right now. So, well, not because you're you're buying liquor and bringing it back, but they just they're trying to. You're supposed to be self isolating right now, so they they they, right. they, they don't they don't want you know people. I guess potential Pennsylvania carriers, you know, bringing <laughs> bringing it in Jersey and Delaware and and, and yeah. you know yeah. spreading yeah. and whatnot. So. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, be careful. I forgot. I still I still have PA plates on my car, so I better even make sure I'm not. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, exactly. So they are yeah. pulling people over with, you know, if you're if you're out there driving and whatnot sometimes. Okay. So, yeah, this is a tough time. Hi, but, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, thanks to Raj. Thanks to Raj for your time. And you know, I love this because, you know, you know, you're a you're a student of the of the. The, the whiskey, you know, your student of, and, and both uh, uh, appreciate our education. You did your WSCT three? I did a few. Did you get your certificate already? Or no, nah, I don't know where it is. It okay, yeah, it it took me. It took it took them like a long. Yeah. You know, so um, um, keep it up. You know, it, I hope everybody keeps it up, and you know, keep your keep your head up, everybody, and uh, uh, and. And I will. So Raj will have um, a shelk, a shelk. Yeah. A Probably in a couple on, weeks, we'll post it up there when we're going to do it. Yeah. Oh yeah. So plug yeah. plug your Facebook page, Glass Revolution Facebook. You can just search Glass yeah. Revolution. Glass Rev. Yep. Glass yeah. Rev on Facebook. Go there, give them a like, uh, and then you'll be able to see when they do uh, more of these. Uh, videos and whatnot. I'll also um, share the streams on my uh, on my channels as well and whatnot. Great. Uh, and then so we'll look forward. We'll be looking forward to that, and hopefully we'll have you know all these Amru super fans uh, asking questions at that next broadcast. Great. All right. Well, thank thanks you everyone. You know, we'll be do safe. Our, stay well. Uh, all right. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate it. Yeah. Take care. Exactly. Have a good one, guys. Have a good night.